Hey everyone, Dr. Backbencher here, and today we will be studying cataract, right? Cataract is one of the most common diseases of the eye, and we will not be actually going into the types of cataracts, right? We will just be studying the basics of cataracts, right? Let's move on. This is a picture of cataracts, right? I have taken this picture from Wikipedia, and you can see that here's the, this brown place is the iris right and this has been and this iris has been opened up using drugs right and you can see at that uh, after illuminating usually in a normal guy this place would be completely black because this white thing right here is the lens right and if a lens is white it can't really transmit light it needs to be absolutely transparent and when it's transparent it looks it it, it appears black right or here we can see that it's totally white and this is actually cataracts so cataracts is basically it's it's the opacification of the lens which leads to a decrease in vision right opacification when something becomes opaque instead of transparent right and it usually develops very very slowly um, most of the time people don't even notice and symptoms include faded colors right if something is like very very bright it will it may appear dull right blurry vision because of course if you're if you, there's something wrong with the lens right it won't focus vision properly halos around light now what is a halo actually halo is like for example for example let's let's uh, imagine let's imagine a candle right let's imagine a candle now what is halo see you can even see, even normal people might see halo sometime, right? But it is very, very intense uh, with people who have uh, cataracts, right? So halo is, if, if, if you sometimes noticed, there is this, from far away, you might see this ring of light, right? This ring is actually called a halo, right? And people who, who have cataracts have halos around light right then there is a uh, trouble with bright lights right if you're driving at night for example and someone turns on their car headlights very bright because your lens is kind of white just like just like we saw here the light will disperse right it will disperse all over the lens and as a result you will not see properly you cannot see properly because of that so halos around light trouble with bright lights and trouble seeing at night because of course if it's opaque at night there's already very less light the weak light won't be able to enter properly as a result uh, trouble seeing at night right simple uh, nothing so complicated no rocket science here okay and causes what could cause cataracts well there are many many causes right but one of the most significant causes of cataracts is aging what happens in aging we know that when a guy ages their tissues degrade right they degenerate and they're not as functional as they used to be same as the case with lens a lens it can repair itself up to a certain age after that there is more degradation than there is healing as a result the lens of the eye it gets progressively damaged progressively damaged as a result we we land with cataracts trauma there are certain injuries uh, which can lead to cataracts then there are very specific eye surgeries especially vitrectomy right vitrectomy is a procedure in which in which there is removal of the vitreous humor for certain reasons for certain pathologies and that is very very strong in fact 80 to 90 percent of the times uh, when when people do vitrectomies they always suffer from cataracts right so it is a very important thing to remember certain eye surgeries can cause cataracts then there's radiation which can damage the the, the structure of the lens congenital of course uh, if if a baby is born right and their lens don't doesn't develop properly during their intrauterine life that can also cause cataracts and the treatment of cataract is surgery right just that you cannot give drugs to probably slow down or or remove cataracts altogether no it's surgery you have to do surgery and uh, its surgeries are actually one of the most successful things in medical, right? They're almost always successful, right? Not a problem at all. And we will be studying uh, surgery of cataracts in a lot of detail in the next, well, not the next, but af after a few lectures. Then classification of cataracts. So cataracts can be classified on the basis of the location in the lens, where there is opacification, right? 
it's based on the degree of opacity, how much there is opacification, and it's based on age, right? And uh, that at what age do you actually develop cataracts, right? Let's start off with the simplest one. Classification on the basis of location in the lens. So, nuclear, cortical, capsular, polar, pyramidal. Okay, let's get to it, right? Let, let, let me have a picture. Let me have a lens, right? Here's one. Now, before I actually uh, get directly into their names let's first identify a few regions first of all we know that the central region of the lens from the last lecture we learned that it's called the nucleus right this nucleus is then surrounded by these fibers right and this outer area is called the cortex right? nucleus in the center cortex towards the outside and then this outer blue covering is called the capsule right and this is oh uh, yeah uh, let's let's let me tell you first this is the front side right and this is the back side and you can identify it just by its shape right the the back side is usually more curved than the front side so that's the basic structure right so let's go back a slide we see that there are basically three or four locations the most common ones are these three that is the nuclear cataract right which occurs somewhere somewhere around here because it's the nucleus right then we have the let me, let me take a different color then we have the uh, the cataract which uh, which occurs in the uh, cortex right cortex is outside so if there's a there's a opacity over here or opacity over here or here or somewhere here right cortical cataract then there is capsular cataract right when it is very very near to the capsule let me have a different color for that Capsular is also sometimes called subcapsular, right? But it's all right. It's, it's the same thing, right? Nothing so different about that. So capsular, when it is very, very near to the capsule. Subcapsular means the same thing. It means below the capsule. So capsular, when it is very near to the capsule. For example, a cataract over here, right? A big opacity at this place. Or maybe a big opacity over here, right? Or maybe a, an opacity over here, right? So nuclear cortical in the cortex and then we have the capsular right these are the three big types and then there we, we and then we have two more right if you really want to go into it there's polar and a pyramidal type polar is when it occurs at the pole right at the very end so for example if there is a cataract over here on opacity over here you would call that a polar cataract and then there's the pyramidal which is actually very uh, strange it is actually outside the capsule for example over here and it is usually shaped like a pyramid like a triangle like a pyramid kind of structure right so let's talk about them again nuclear nuclear cortical cortical all over the place capsular near the capsules the green one polar near the poles the red ones pyramidal outside right here right so basic simple and nothing difficult about it now on the basis of opacity right there are these few classifications and you will notice uh, as we go through each and every one of them that most of them are not actually based on opacity right it's just a general classification so this title might be a bit misleading right so let's start incipient is actually an english word right which means just starting right when something is just starting that thing is called incipient so when the opacity is just starting right very very slowly very very gradually that the guy slowly feels it that is called an incipient kind of cataract right and honestly i mean it's not really a subtype of a cataract it's actually one of the stages of a cataract right so as i said base they're not uh, the, this 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 title might be a bit misleading right so incipient you can think of more of these more of like stages of uh, the cataract right instead of classification of a cataract so incipient uh, when it's just starting then there is immature where, where there is partial opacity right it's not fully opaque there's a little bit of opacity right a little bit of halos a little bit of glaring right and then there is a mature one right when it completely matures when there's complete opacity right you can see very very little let's just uh, skip the this one right now then we have the hyper mature when it is uh, an, a bit of a extreme form of mature right and what happens is or I, I'm also called this calcified 
it's a bit different in the way it's written in our book, right? But I assure you, this is pro this is this is this is correct, right? So what happens in a hypermature cataract is that there is, of course, complete opacity because it's a, it's mature as well, right? And you can see calcium deposits there, right? That's why it's called calcified. You can see calcium deposits, and there is also leakage of the fluid outside. Right? There is some problem with the capsule. The capsule leaks out the fluid. Remember, we studied that uh, the lens is like 70% of water, right? And that water, uh, when it leaks outside, the membrane or the, the, the capsule will kind of go limp, right? It'll get wrinkled. Wrinkled capsule due to fluid loss, right? Simple. And then there is a, another interesting kind. It's called Morgagnian. It's called a Morgagnian cataract. And it is a very severe kind of cataract in which there is extreme degeneration of the cortex, right? The cortex absolutely gets liquefied. Usually the cortex has fibers, right? Remember, uh, the cortex has fibers, right? And it's a bit of a solid thing. But when it totally gets liquefied, right? And the cortex is totally destroyed. And, and the, the nucleus, which is a bit denser than the cortex, it's just freely floating around in that liquid medium this is called a morgagnian cataract right and usually what happens is that this free floating nucleus usually falls down right if this is the lens for example uh, you will see that this nucleus is actually somewhere around here it falls down due to gravity this is this this place is full of liquid right now okay so Morgagnian is a bit of a intense, bit of an advanced situation, right? We will encounter all these words when uh, we are actually uh, studying cataracts, right? But I wanted to just be clear uh, from now on because in the next lectures when we are actually discussing a type of a cataract, I don't just want to go over these things because of course it will disturb the flow, right? If I start out of nowhere, start uh, discussing a Morgagnian cataract, it'll just disturb the flow, right? It'll divert your attention. You will even forget that we are studying a type of a cataract, okay? So I just explained most of it right now. If there are some, some details which we missed, I'm sure we will cover it in the next lectures, right? And now we come towards the intumescent kind of cataract. Well, again, it's a, it's a partially opaque cataract, just like these two ones, right? Incipient and immature. But here's a little feature about it. It causes glaucoma, right? It can cause something called an, a close angle glaucoma or angle closure glaucoma, right? And what happens in intumescent cataract is that there is overhydration. Remember, I said that the lens has 70% of water. So let's assume you, you insert a bit of more water inside the lens. As a result, it swells up, right? And when it swells up, it can cause glaucoma, right? And how would that cause glaucoma? That is a complicated topic in its own. We will be explaining, I promise I'll explain this when we're studying glaucoma, right? Which is the next chapter. And then there is, of course, uh, classification on the basis of age, right? Ah, nothing so difficult, right? So congenital, when the baby is born, they have a cataract for certain reasons. We will be studying congenital. It is actually a type of a, of a cataract, uh, which we will be studying in the very next lecture. Then there is infantile, when the, when, the guy, when the child is an infant. And then there is juvenile, when he grows up a little bit. Then there is adult, when he grows up even more. Then there is pre-senile, when he's like a little bit old, right? And then there is senile, when he's very old. And then he gets cataracts, right? So, so nothing, nothing so so difficult, nothing so special about these, right? Senile cataract is a type of cataract which we will be studying, right? Because this is the most commonest type. And yeah, I think that's about it. Um, in the next lecture, we will be studying the types. We will start. We'll start with probably with the congenital type, right? And thank you for watching. Um, like, subscribe, and share. Uh, if you think it's worth it because it supports me it helps me it motivates me to make even uh, better lectures right and yeah that's it thank you so much i'll see you in the next one